Welcome to Gun Law Podcast. What's going on? What's going on, ballers? And welcome to another episode of the Beyond the Ball podcast. And I, I'm Jonathan Jones, and I'm here with the one and the only Jessica Hazard, who is the Associate Athletic Director for Student Athlete Development, as well as the Athletics and Dive. Oh, Jessica, help me out. Help me out. <laughs> I, I, diversity, equity, and inclusion. I, I oversee all the diversity, equity, and inclusion initiatives within the department. There, 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 there we go. There we go. And, 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 and you're in, out in Fort Worth, Texas at, at TCU, just, just doing amazing things. Jessica, how are you doing today? I'm doing pretty good. Um, Friday, Friday is always kind of a fun afternoon when we have a home game because it feels like you kind of ramp your day down a little earlier because everyone has to work the next day mm-hmm. and get ready for football. So you get a little break sometimes Friday afternoon. So it's a nice uh, Friday wind down. Uh, but we have a busy weekend, so everything's always going. Good, good. Well, how, so how does that feel? Like, like with, with everything always going, especially just in, the, in this world of athletics, like what, what type of mindset does one have to be in to always be going, be able to adjust? Talk a little bit about that. Yeah, I mean, it's interesting. I, I think COVID um, has really challenged some of us that are used to like, going a thousand miles an hour um, mm-hmm. <laughs> because we just weren't sure what it was going to look like. But I, I think generally in athletics, uh, People ask me a lot, like, what's your day look like? Or what's it? And I'm like, well, I don't really have one. Like, I couldn't walk you through mm. what a day was going to look like for me necessarily. Um, but, you know, I was at volleyball last night. I'll be at volleyball tonight at 730. We play football tomorrow at 3. Uh, you know, and this is fall when it's slow. Wow. So, you know, like, hit spring and you've got, you know, baseball. With they And they're, you know, three-game series of baseball. And you've got all these things happening um, all the time. Basketball's in season, right? So um, try to get out to as many games as possible to support, um, especially in my role. I think it's really important for student athletes to see you supporting them um, mm-hmm. in their sport and in their time um, whenever possible and be visible. It's all about relationships with student athlete development and also de You're not going to hear what's going on unless you have those relationships. So try to get out as much as possible. Um, this year, we're a little bit of a break because we jumped into that ESPN Plus world. Mm-hmm. now with our our tv contracts so we're actually getting some of our non like our non-football basketballs that are typically on tv right we're getting some volleyballs on tv stuff like that mm-hmm. so if you're tired after a long day you can maybe sneak in and stay home and still be able to watch the team <laughs> but not have to physically be there so sometimes that's a benefit okay okay and and then jessica just for everybody else out there who, who, who may not be familiar with you know like with with what you do in your role can you just like break down just like general overview like, like a, a little bit of just, just what what that looks like sure um so i always say that student athlete development is in charge of supporting our student athletes with everything that is not athletic hmm. so not their sport including not their medical right mental health we do crossover to mental health but their physical health is not ours um, not academics. It's not our world either. And so I call it everything else. So all the other things that happen while you're in college, all the things you need to know when you're ready to go. That's what our job is. So really, you know, I guess one example would be, you know, nobody knows what's going to happen. The world doesn't stop moving when you leave and come to college. Right? Mm-hmm. Things happen back home. Mm-hmm. Things happen here. Uh, breakups, like parents get divorced, um, mm. you lose people, your dog dies, you, like things that you just are not prepared for, you know, and you don't have your normal support system, if you're, or at least what you're used to, mm. whatever that looked like when you were home. Um, so we function in a role to be able to talk through those things, you know, you've never had a roommate before, maybe and you can't stand your roommate, like, how do we manage, you know, <laughs> who's sharing what food, what drawer, you know, all the things that affect your, your day to day happiness in college. Um, but from a programmatic lens, um, pretty traditional in, in the way we do our programs. We support uh, professional and career development and make sure that our student athletes are prepared as possible to transition to the next next phase, um, whatever that is. Um, mm-hmm. Unfortunately, most of our student athletes, this will be the last time they are athletes, which is a big identity problem. Um, yeah. When you're at a school like TCU and you're playing at this level, um, 
people always assume that it's like football and basketball, all think they're going pro. I'm like, all my student athletes think they're going pro. Like, mm. we're going to the Olympics. My track student athletes think they're going to the Olympics. My tennis student athletes are like, most of them, like, we're going pro. My rifle student athletes, Olympics. You know, so you've got a lot, mm. there's a lot of pressure, but there's also a lot tied into their identity as who they are as an athlete and not so much tied to anything else. So that's a big identity piece that we work on because that fall is hard it's a it's a deep fall yeah. and really contributes to mental health and those things so anyway that's a little off topic but so professional development personal development skills so do you know how to change a tire do you know how to grocery shop uh can you cook in your dorm uh what's a healthy relationship how to be an ally so we're doing all those types of programmings and offering that stuff as well as service um service looks really weird this year in covid because mm. you can only do virtual service which feels yeah. very not connecting, which is really what you're trying to do in service. Um, but Frog It Forward is our service initiative. And then we have an elite athlete program that we run to help our athletes who are going to transition the pros be as prepared as possible for the next step. Mm. And that's built into a class that we offer and some other things. So that's kind of the programmatic lens of what we're doing uh, from student athlete development lens. And now there's kind of the whole DE&I stuff that's happening, um, uh -huh. which I chair the council. So we have a council of staff members and coaches and um, three spots for student athletes. And we are working through a culture survey right now that we put out to the student athletes to figure out what it's like to be a student athlete here. Um, and also one for staff. And then we're gonna create a five-year integrated plan to hopefully really embed DE&I in the athletic department. So that's what I'm working on. <laughs> wow, you said, wow, I, I, I had no idea that y'all have programming to help student athletes with changing the tire and among some of the other things you said that really popped out to me because I was like, wait, wow. Like, we haven't like, done that one in a minute, but I want to put, because of COVID, like I want it back on our rotation. It's like, how do you, you know, how, do you know how to do this? Like mm. I just got a new car and I was like, where's the spare? I'm like, mm. oh, we don't have spares anymore. I was like, what do you mean? What do you do if you get a flat tire? <laughs> really? They don't have yeah. spares anymore? No, they give you like fix a flat essentially. Oh right? yeah. You like a whole kit now and then you mm -hmm. go yeah. Like, oh, okay. So I'm, you know, you need to know how to do these things. What happens if you oh, what? run the side of the road? Yeah, that would. I mean, that'd be a very terrible situation, especially if you have like a tire and it's like gashed yeah. very yeah. severely. Yeah. Then the fix yeah. flat. And yeah, it's not the fix work. flat's not 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 gonna <laughs> not gonna get that done. But uh, but Jessica, I like how you really hit on the piece just about about your student student athletes identity piece and, and talking about just with them transitioning and and you know what that looks like long term and even how y'all have the program for like like the what, what what was it the elite athlete program the and, and and then even having that program so now i'm, I'm gonna slightly switch gears and then i'm 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 gonna I'm gonna, I'm gonna shift it to you though and i'm gonna ask you who who is jessica hazard um <laughs> I guess, you know, I, I am a person who has pretty much worked in service in some capacity my whole career since I left college. Um, athletics is my second career, so I've kind of jumped around, but I, I've created programs and worked in very different spaces um, since I left my college career some time ago. Uh, and have just kind of moved around and been able to be lucky and find kind of niche areas I've been able to fit into that work for things that are important to me and being able to still feel like I was providing something to myself and my own you know, personal growth and also the people I was kind of serving and, and there for. And um, so that's always been really important to me. Um, I went to law school late in life. It, it switched my career into athletics, um, which I didn't really see coming. Um, and then that switched my career to now being with student athletes specifically and look at what that looks like and also pushing kind of DEI policy development things like that, that I think is a little rare space for athletic department staff. Most mm -hmm. people will be like, oh yeah, I was a GA. And then I, you know, it's kind of the, the pathway mm -hmm. into athletics departments and that just wasn't my pathway. Um, so I've been able to create spaces and serve and kind of do things for people uh, most of my life. And that's important to me. And yeah, I, I like to have a good time. I have a great set of friends that keep me balanced and focused and family that is around that does the same and yeah and my dog hangs out with me when no one else wants to so that's always important <laughs> i would say no one's ever as excited to see you as like my dog when i walk in i could be gone like five minutes and i come back in the house and he's like so excited and i'm like everybody needs a little bit of that in their life <laughs> yeah yeah and and 
And one thing I think that just make makes your career path really, really unique, Jessica, I think just like how you said that you have the law school background and then you said now you're you're in a position to where you're working on like policy and, and helping helping putting those things in place. Like what was it that caused the shift from from law school to, to like you doing what you're doing now? Or, or what, what was, you know, a piece that, that made you just, just want to make that decision? Yeah, so I was working in San Francisco for the mayor's office, um, the mayor who is now the governor. So Gavin Newsom was the mayor, and I was working under his administration, um, doing a few things, but overseeing programs and managing, like writing RFPs and RFQs, like for grants, mm -hmm. and then okay, managing okay. the grants on the back end. So writing a lot of gang and homicide reduction policy um, for the city of San Francisco at that time. And um, my kind of catchment area and age group was this kind of 14 to 24. Mm -hmm. So juveniles, but also this crossover group where you're considered an adult, but you're not really an adult per se, and even in brain development, right? So from a criminal mm -hmm. justice and juvenile justice lens, you get a lot of that time frame when people who get in trouble with the law stop getting in trouble with the law if it times itself out almost as mm -hmm. you get out of that age range, right? So that was the area we were working with. Um, and I decided I should go to law school. I don't really know why I did it. I was like, I don't know what I was thinking um, when I look back on it, but I was like, oh, I think I'll go to law school. And there was an opportunity um, that I got into a school that had a night program. Um, so I was, continued to work. I was still doing my job at the city and I was going to law school at night. Um, and so did that in about two, I guess I was two years in. Mm. I was, had been about almost five years with the city, I think, and around two years, and I was like spent. Like homicide work is exhausting. San Francisco, um, I came out of like direct service, so I ran a Boys and Girls Club in the, um, in the housing development there. Um, all the people that do that type of work all knew each other. San Francisco, seven by seven square miles. So you ultimately <laughs> ended up in a space where you either knew the young people who were getting killed personally, Wow. Or you definitely knew the program that they went to or the neighborhood they were from mm. and, you know, the people that were very, and it, it's a lot. I still have friends that are still doing that work and that I'm like, they're one of the most amazing people I've ever been around. Like the fact that they're in it and they are so committed. Um, and I just needed a break. I was like, city politics was dragging me down and it was kind of exhausting. And so I was like, I'm going to stop working and finish my last year and a half of law school um, and just do school and do some internships and get some legal experience. So I ended up getting my internship with the Oakland Raiders. Mm. So I'm a big Oakland Raider fan. I am not a Las Vegas Raider fan, FYI. I am an <laughs> Oakland Raider fan because I claim Oakland as my second home. Um, so ended up there, which pushed me to the athletic side. Um, my chief general counsel at the time when I was interning um, used to work at USC like way, way back in the day. And I was like, should I stay on the pro side? You know, do I go university? And he said, probably the truest thing that moved me that way. And he said, you know, I don't know why you would do that. I don't know why you'd stay on the pro side. Like you're, what you mm -hmm. love is that the younger age group guys, you know, like from a, guys from the football lens. Mm -hmm. um, not that I don't like working with the women, but in that space. Mm -hmm. um, and he's like, you just don't get that engagement. Like you're in the legal office here. Like guys are coming up mad about their contracts. That's your engagement with the, you know, the athletes. And in, you'll never get that. And your experience and program and that age range is perfect for college. So I was like, oh. And then he said, if you can get over how much you're going to hate the NCAA, you're going to love college athletics. <laughs> that was what he told me. So I'll no comment on, on my personal feelings. But um, so that's what kind of pushed me to go that direction. Um, and I ended up um, actually at Boise State for about six months. Um, this is a lesson in, um, in networking and also privilege. Uh, I grew up in Boise. Mm. And I'm the youngest. My brother and sister have friends that are like five and seven years older than me, um, who most people have stayed. And they were pretty influential people at the time. And I was like, hey, I'm going to reach out to people that know me. And I said, hey, here's my resume. This is what I'm trying to do. And it landed on the desk of the right person uh, in the athletic department. And they called me and said, hey, you can come. We have about $5 we can pay you. <laughs> we don't really have a position. In. But if you want to come, you know, and I was able to be home and some things. And so I was there six months. And then I ended up transferring, got a job at TCU in their compliance office and started out in compliance um, in 
when did I get here? 2012 um, at TCU. Wow. Yeah, so I think compliance coordinator making like $31,000 a year with like $100,000 in law school debt. It was a great financial decision. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sounds like a great math lesson uh, <laughs> along with the amazing geography lesson. Uh, yeah. Because what, I mean, one thing that I'm, I'm, I'm starting to see as, as just, you know, just being in the space and connecting with, with more uh, influential individuals doing great, impactful work that, that, that like you're doing is that you have to really love this work and you also have to be willing to to pick up and then move when the opportunity presents itself like to 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 to, to really i mean just and, and once again this is from outside looking in. This, this is what i've seen uh, uh jessica you know just just seeing this is like wow that that people it's like okay I'll, I'll get in the door here and then do what i need to do to, to work my way up yeah, and I think, you know, because I came into athletics a little later in my in my age of my career, um, mm -hmm. I was a little less, I wasn't afraid to move necessarily, mm -hmm. um, but I was, I've been, I was really lucky. I went to mm -hmm. Boise and then I ended up here and those are the two places I've been, right? I've been here since oh, my wow. ninth, ninth season here. Now it's not typical, especially if you start out the GA route, you're, mm -hmm. you're going. Mm -hmm. And I also will say now, even further along in my career, I'm even more picky, like, if I were to leave TCU, it'd be for very specific reasons. Definitely. And, you know, and very specific, you know, out things that I'm looking for at this point in my career. Um, location is one of them, right? Like <laughs> quality of life and location matter. Um, one thing I'll tell all you are like, oh, college sports, so much fun. Not all the most amazing locations from my personal opinion. Like mm. I'm kind of like city, you know, and so you think about where some of these colleges are located and, you know, I've had friends leave um, TCU, for example, to get better jobs, but are single and they end up in college towns where it's really hard to date. It's mm. really hard to find, you know, wow. it's a really a whole town created around the young, the students. And so those are things that get, can get tricky and get hard finding partners and things like that when you're not a student um, in college athletics is, it can be tricky, especially at a division one level. So. True, true. And then, and I mean, one other thing I just want to underscore our, our highlight as well, just like you said, Jessica, you like now you now you're in a position to where you're a little bit more picky. And you said along your journey, like there, there were some areas where you, you know, you picked and you had certain opportunities, but also you have the law degree, right? So you, so you, so you've put in a level of sweat equity in a different area sure. which transfers over really well you know, for you having a, a level of, well, you having a level of credentials, so it, it allows you to have a certain level of leeway, right, in, in, in regards to, you know, certain things, but somebody else coming in, you know, if somebody tries to come in, you know, at, 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 at the GA level, I won't say at the bottom level, but at, at like the GA level or wherever they can get in, you know, they, they may not have that leeway yeah. just based on experience, based on relationship. So ultimately, there's... There, there's no shortcuts around just trying to elevate in, in any area. No, and you, you know, I, put in the work. you just do the work and, and it mm -hmm. figures itself out sort of, you know, I've been really lucky at TCU. I've been super supported. And, you know, I, like I said, I started as a compliance. I've basically been in athletics, like college athletics, for like 10 years. Mm -hmm. And I, I started in, which isn't that long considering, you know, right. Mm -hmm. And I, I'm like a compliance coordinator and I'm here three years and I'm like, hey, we're missing this whole thing called student athlete development. I come from programs, it's what I do. I can tell you what we're missing. Can I start a department? Wow. And they were like, oh, okay. So I started the department six years ago. And then I'm like, hey, I've been embedding all this diversity, equity, inclusion stuff and all the stuff we're doing the student athletes. If you don't change what also is happening over here with hiring and staff and list, like we're not gonna change anything. So mm -hmm. can I also like jump in and like help train staff and can we figure out how we can also impact and they were supportive of those moves and you know have moved me. So I've been really lucky in, in being supported um, from just kind of grinding and you know <laughs> doing the work and <coughs> being creative and when we have gaps and being loud and squeaky about things that I thought were problems. Um, you know, and, and that just, it, it has worked for me. And so I think, you know, if I were, if I were to leave, um, and this is no secret to my TCU folks, um, if I were to leave TCU, there's some very specific things. I, I'm really interested in working under a woman AD. Like mm -hmm. if I'm staying in athletics, 
I either want the experience of working with a woman, woman of color, or a man of color as my athletic director. I want to know what that feels like to have that type of leadership and be, and be kind of taught and led under that type of leadership. So that's, that's important to me as I look to think of like, what's my next step? Um, if I were to leave, those things would be things that I'm, I'm looking for because I think that would be something that would add to my value and that, you know, it would add value to me. Yeah. Wow. So why are you so driven? I don't know. Um, <laughs> otherwise, I'm just bored. I'm like, well, what am I going to do now? Um, so you just kind of go, you know, and, and I'm curious. I'm very curious. I always wanted, you know, people used to ask me, like, this question that I never, I, I knew what they meant, but I never kind of knew what they meant. It was just like, so how did you, like, end up like this? Because I'm like this mm. white kid from Idaho, right? Like, I grew up in Boise, Idaho almost my mm. entire life. Um, and all that I can remember. And it's not like Boise, Idaho is like the booming metropolis of like, it's, not, it's a lot better now. But like when I was coming up, like 100,000 people, really white, um, you know, um, and very pretty clear in socioeconomics for the people of color. Like it just, you know, I look back now and I'm like, oh, right. I went to high school with that person. That makes sense. You know, like I'm looking back now and seeing things that I didn't totally get when I was there. And, and so, I don't know, you know, I, I've always been open to really learning new things and experiencing. Like I left and went to Boston College for undergrads, so went all the way across the country. Um, my dad always really still the travel and like he used to always tell me, uh, he grew up in Southern California with not a lot of money and in a difficult family situation with his parents and um, dad specifically, but and he'd always say, this isn't real life. Like what you're, what you're experiencing isn't really like most people's real life. So I need you to understand that. So you don't assume that this is what it shows up like for most people. And so I just think those kind of, it wasn't some big, you know, my parents were big activists. My mom was an educator in public education. So that's been important to me, um, aunts and uncles too. But I, I didn't have like a family that grew up like very like bucking the system by any means. It just, mm. I was always just really curious and I, I never understood sort of why people were so angry or so like, I, I couldn't figure it all out until I started asking the questions, right? Mm. And, and I'm more talking about white people when I say angry, like I couldn't figure out what the problem was. But like, why do white people have an issue with this? Like why, why are, <laughs> it was more around that because that was what I experienced, right? Like why, do you, why does that person bother you so much? I don't get it. Like how does that really affect your life? So I think those have been questions I've always asked and, and I'm very comfortable putting myself in uncomfortable positions. Mm. and that's that's paid off for me man that's a word that's a word in itself um so i'm i'm, I'm not sure you you may or may not be familiar <clears throat> with with um david goggins right you, you're familiar with david goggins well, sort of uh, one of my co-workers was like is obsessed with him right now yeah yeah he's a i mean he he's He's an ultimate gamer when it comes to just like mindset, and uh, and 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 I'm I'm just quoting him here because I've been listening to him a lot these past this past like week, and and he said, "I want to be uncommon amongst uncommon people," and when yeah. I heard him say that, I was like, "Oh my goodness!" And then just listen to his interview, and I'm and I'm a, I'm gonna bring it back. I'm a, I'm, a, I'm gonna bring it back in a second, Jessica. Okay. But but listening to his interview and how he was saying just, just what you said, he always put himself in uncomfortable positions. And this is coming from a guy who went through and, and, and now is, is a Navy SEAL. But then he realized that every time that he was able to obtain a certain level of success, then he plateaued. And he was like, I, I can't ever plateau. So I have to continue to put myself in situations to where I'm uncomfortable, to where it's challenging something different out of me or, or requiring something new and I was like oh my goodness yeah I, just like mind just completely mind-blowing just I mean that's all I have there but <laughs> <laughs> but just but just but just he hearing you say that and 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 now I'm just curious to hear from you because I've I've connected with, with a few people over at TCU and and the the, the people I've connected with 
they have nothing but great things to say about you. Like I, like I've connected with, you know, with, with, with Danielle Bradford and, 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 and Kristen Lockett. I know, I know she was over there at TCU and she was like, I, I said, Kristen, who should I, you know, who should I bring on next or who should I talk to about getting on the show next? She was like, yeah, you got it. You got to get Jessica. You, you want to talk to Jessica. So I'm, so now I'm, I, I have the opportunity to talk with you and I'm just curious that, you know, as, as she was excited, just, just talking about you and speaking about you, where where does your purpose lie? Because the, these people that that have served with you and you know and locked arms with you, they speak highly of you. So now I'm just curious of like, what's the purpose behind the person? I mean, that's that's the purpose, right? The, the purpose is that you don't have to talk to me to care about me. Is that the people that I was able to influence, hopefully in some space in their time, in my short glimpse of when I had them, that they're they've gained something from that, and that that that's a space that they feel, you know, connected to. Kristen is a, <laughs> Kristen's amazing. Um, you know, and Kristen was, she was not a student athlete. I mean, mm-hmm. she was a showgirl. She was on dance for like one year and then um, didn't do that anymore and ended up coming over and like being a student worker in my area. So she wasn't one of my student athletes. She came over and we sort of joked cause we called her mascot cause she kind of just directed people around. She, didn't, she would always tell everyone what to do. So we're like, hey mascot, like, calm down. Um, <laughs> But, you know, she's, she was around and we hung out and had great conversations and, you know, and learned from each other. And I, I think the purpose is that, that those people remember you and, and remember what happened and how you influenced that and whether you knew you were doing it or not, right? Like whether you knew that one conversation was going to move to a different space or not, you know, um, Danny was another, she was a student worker and sort of ended up not having things go the way she wanted when she was getting ready to graduate and um, was frustrated and kind of came in and was like, I don't know what I'm going to do. And I'm like, what do you want to do? You know? And so we just were able to have that conversation. Now she's my graduate assistant. Um, so she's, she's finishing up. She has this her last year and mm. she'll have a master's and she's finishing that. And, you know, and I, and I think watching people move, move forward. Right. Um, my graduate assistant from last year, Marcellus Perkins, um, great young man, graduated, um, went to Holy Cross, kind of took a leap of faith and came down here, never been in the South. It, it was kind of like, okay, oh, um, wow. you know, I mean, from Virginia, but different, you know, Texas mm-hmm, was different mm-hmm. uh, from Richmond. And, you know, now he, he came to me at the end of the year, he had one more year on his GA ship and was like, look, I got this opportunity to, to be the research assistant for the TCU Race and Reconciliation Project. And, and I was like, I'm so pissed at you, but I'm so excited for you because it was such a cool opportunity and I knew how much growth, you know, that, that's what he wants to do, right? Mm -hmm. That's, that's his space is to go and learn this whole research project that they're doing to recognize how TCU's connections to slavery and the Confederacy tie back. And he's going to be the, he's the research intern for that. That's amazing, right? And so like those things and watching people kind of just go and and move forward from what you've done and still reach out. My student athletes, um, small things, you know, I, I had a student athlete who's in the league now in the NFL and he called me like, I don't know, a year ago. He's been in the league a few years now. He called me. He's like, Hey, Ms. Jessica, I have a question. I'm like, what's up? He's like, I want to buy some property. And I'm like, okay. Like <laughs> I'm a real estate agent. And he's like, I know, but like, I, I want to buy some housing around TCU because we had some really cool alumni that gave us affordable housing as athletes, like, right. Mm. Old houses that took, made sure we had an okay place to live for an affordable price, right? No NCAA violations. No one. Um, and, and he said, and I want to do that, but I don't know anyone, but I know you will. And mm. I know whoever you tell me to talk to will not steer me wrong. Mm. And so I was like, Oh, okay. And then I was like, give me a minute. And then I started like kind of going through, I'm thinking who are our alumni, who do I know? And I'm like, perfect. And so like that type of trust in me and, you know, five years later, three years later, however many years, you know, that's, that's the purpose The calls on my birthday. I'm like, how do you remember my birthday? <laughs> you know, like <laughs> random things that happen. And I'm like, well, that's cool. And so I just think, you know, making sure that you're instilling things in people that that add value to them and that make you them value you and that experience, I guess is the purpose. Where does Jessica Hazard see herself in five years? 
That's interesting. Um, I don't really know. I have, I'm really, really, so I, I went through the Cornell um, ILR program last year. So it's a usually about a year long program to get my professional, my diversity certi certification. Okay. Um, because I really wanted to, I've been doing DEI work like my whole career. Mm -hmm. I, I just didn't really know that's what it was all the time. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Right. Until I like went and like flipped my resume to looking at it from a DEI lens. I'm like, Oh, that juvenile justice work. That's DEI work. Mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. Right. And equity and usually race. And you know, so inclusion and like, that's that work. Oh, that was, you know, working in a, um, a multiple felony boys group home. That was DE and I work, right? Prison to school, but all the things I was doing, like all this stuff that I was like, oh, that was DE and I, oh, that's DE and I, and all these programs we've been doing it, you know, that's DE and I. And so um, I wanted to kind of really get the broader picture and really get my, so, so I got my certification last fall. Um, and so I've really been like looking at how to, what does that mean for me and how does that look? And I'm, I think kind of to um, Mr. Goggin's point, I love student athlete development um, and I love my interaction with the student athletes, but I'm getting stagnant because I wasn't being as challenged. Like I just, mm -hmm. I got through then six years of it and I was kind of like this last year, I felt like, am I really impacting the way I used to? Like, what, where am I and what's causing this? Right. So I really started to look at what started sort of, um, you know, people are like, what's your passion? And so I asked the student athletes a different question because they usually can't tell you what their passion is. They're like, I don't know. And I'm like, what pisses you off? Mm. So for me, if I ask myself wow. that question, what pisses me off is inequity. What pisses me off is, you know, racial, racial division. What piss like, those are the things that, you know, being exclusive, being kind of, that stuff infuriates me. So I was like, oh, here's my new thing to really dive into kind of both, you know, both feet. So um, I don't know. I, I definitely think I'll be shifting into probably a more, D and I space, whatever that looks like, whether that's athletics or I don't know, corporate or government, I don't really know. Uh, but I definitely know it'll, that'll be the world I'm sort of trending to. Um, again, a little more policy, right? Like <laughs> it, it's kind of this cycle I get into where I, I do this a lot of one on one um, work and it satisfies me for a while. And then I think what happens is when the system isn't changing, you continue to see the same issues coming in. So for student athletes, I'm seeing the same things coming in. Some mm. things are changing, but there's some things that are staying the same, right? Yeah. And then that it makes me frustrated that things aren't changing. And then I'm like, well, someone needs to change it. Well, that someone just will be me then, I guess. So I kind of move into these like one-on-one -on -one kind of relationship building things to more of a system policy space to try to impact a greater change. And I think that's where I am now, like really to figure out how to embed my experience and my passion for the diversity, equity, inclusion space into wherever I end up fitting best. I love your mindset just on that. Just, just, ha just having the awareness, like you said, to, to see something that's, that's being repetitive, but then saying, well, how can, how, well, you know, serve, serving this individual on a one-on-one -on -one basis, of course, is, is great work. But then how can we just scale this? Because yeah. ultimately, it, it, it's going to be necessary. And, you know, j just to be, just to work, work smarter and, and not necessarily harder. So, yeah. so I definitely commend you on, you know, everything, everything that, that, that you're doing at, you know, at TCU and beyond. And, you know, j just the way that you've been able to serve people at a high level and continue to keep healthy relationships because everybody I don't think everybody understands and I guess uh, this is general but to, to have valued and healthy relationships for a, a long period of time is, is a true skill in itself it's tr true true skill in itself so I want I want to commend you on, on, on all that that you're doing and Jessica I want I want to thank you for taking the time and, and, and hanging out with us today but before I let you go I, I have to I have to run you through the two minute drill. Okay. And and the two minute drill is just a little 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 fun segment. We we just we we have have a, have a few rapid fire questions. I, I just shoot them off. I just ask you, and then after that we we wrap a bow up. We tie it, and then I allow you to enjoy the rest of your day. So Perfect. are you ready? Ready. All right. And here we go. Favorite food. Today tacos. Oh, what, what kind of tacos? Street tacos, like legit Mexican street tacos. 
those, those are the best. What, what's the last book that you read? I'm reading like three right now. So um, or the Champion Organizational Strategy. Um, I'm, I reread White Fragility, just finished that because I was kind of rereading. And then um, my aunt gave me one. I'm forgetting the topic, right, the title right now. But I'm reading kind of three at the moment. Gotcha, gotcha. What's, what's your go-to quarantine Netflix show of preference? Well, I ho- finishing Homeland was like the whole Homeland series okay. was unbelievable. I watched all of that. And right now I'm watching Lovecraft Country, which is like, I really need like a sit down. I need Jordan Peele to go back and be like, okay, this is what all this stuff meant. Cause I was like Googling stuff last night, like what's Hippolyta mean? And I'm like, oh, it's just a Greek goddess. Like I have no idea this makes sense now on why her character is that way. But I know his mind is so like crazy mm-hmm. and like meaning genius. It that is. Every song that's played has some meaning. And I'm like, I need to know these things. Like it's mm-hmm. bothering me that I don't know what the symbolism to this song <laughs> or this, this name. So this I need awesome. him to do a, like a docu-series on what it all meant when it's over. That's good. And what, what, do, you, what, what do you do for self-care? Um, you know, like I said, I have great friends around me. We talk a lot. I have friends that don't work in my field. This is very important for those of you who work in high demand fields, high stress. Hang out with people that don't work in your field because quite frankly, they'll care for about 10 seconds about how your day was and then they're going to move on to something else because no one wants to sit and have you talk about how exhausting your work was. And if you get with work people all the time, it's all you will do. You will talk, talk, talk about work all the time and you can't get away from it. So I have mm. friends that don't work in my field um, and we hang out and spend a lot of time together doing that. I'm a big wine enthusiast, so I like to do wine trips and things like that. Um, you know, and I I would like to say that I'm working out, but I have, uh, I had hip replacement surgery three weeks ago mm. and had a prior hip surgery March 10th. So I basically have just been walking for three weeks. So I'm super excited. I'm walking. That's, that's right now. That's my go-to. Oh, goodness. <laughs> is walking. Good. And, and then this, this is the, the last question for you. What's one tip that you want to leave for a student athlete? Um, if you are a student athlete, we as a university are going to take everything we possibly can take from you on a performance level. We are going to expect everything from you. Take every single thing you can from us. Mm. Take it all. Take do every program you can possibly do. Get every networking out to meet every alumni you can meet. Take every single thing you can possibly take from us because for those of you who are student athletes, I was listening to one of our former student athletes football talk about how broke down his body is now at 40, <laughs> right? Like get your, get your money's worth on both sides. This is a contract, mm. right? This isn't free. You're not getting your education free. This is a binding contract, which means there's consideration. You're giving something up. We're giving something up. Mm. Take it. Take everything you can possibly get. And when you don't, you're going to come back and be like, why didn't I? I don't know how many student athletes come back like, I know, I don't know why I didn't do this when I was here. And I'm like, I know, me neither. Wow. Me neither. Take everything you can get. Man, that, that, that's, that may be arguably the best, the best tip that anybody has shared right there, Jessica. That's, I mean, I think, I think that's going to be it. That's oh, real. Oh, my goodness. And then this, this question, this is just bonus. <clears throat> Who, 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 is, who is one guest that you would like me to see? Who, who is one person that you would like to see me interview on Beyond the Ball next? Hmm. Man, I've, I've been around so many amazing people. Um, Dr. Emma Gill, mm. social worker, does a lot of work in social work and sport and how the crossover between social work and mental health and why that's so important. Um, he's amazing. Um, Kelton Hollins, one of my current football players, uh-huh, uh-huh. rock star, just crushing the game, uh, understanding his value and, t- you know, what his education looks like and how to take advantage, done study abroad like twice, mm. you know, did our end racism mural, like he's just a dynamic uh, person. Um, I can't leave out the ladies. Let me think, who are the women I really think, there's so many women, I'm like, oh yeah, her, her, oh, yeah, her. Um, you already got Kristen. Mm-hmm. <laughs> she's amazing um yeah i mean nicole lynn rock star nfl agent 
Oh yeah, I, 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 yeah, I, I reached out to her. I need to, I need to circle back. Yeah, yeah, that yeah. Has, uh, Kristen knows her as well. She's, she's, she's really dynamic and you know, make breaking ground. Um, so women in like place untraditional spaces, I would say, like, how, like how'd you get here? Yeah, those are hard. Sounds good. Sounds. My good. only other student out there tidbit, other than besides what I said, mm -hmm. take care of you. Hmm. Advocate for yourself, ask the question, take care of you. You're the first person who's going to do it. Mm. 100%. So. <laughs> Jessica, well, I certainly appreciate you. Like I said before, taking time to hang out with this, hang out with me, to hang out with the ballers. So I, I greatly appreciate you, know, you, you, you taking this time and, and, and coming on and, and sharing your insight, sharing your story. And you know, just sharing the great things that, 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 that you're doing and as you continue to pay it forward. So I thank you. Thank you for having me. I really appreciate it. Most definitely. And everybody out there listening, all the ballers out there listening, the only thing I would just ask you all to do is just to share this episode with one friend that you know that would be able to benefit. And we thank you for hanging out with us today. This is Jonathan Jones, and this is Beyond the Ball. Thank you.